Good day, everybody. Welcome to Dental Voice Season 2 with Zyrus. My name is Rolando Mia, and today our guest is a wonderful person. I can't wait till we get into more discussion with Sonia Dunbar. So <clears throat> the purpose of Dental Voice is to hear from professionals in dentistry, get their perspectives, their opinions, get kind of their insights into what's going on here, as well as also some advice regarding kind of how we navigate through and move into the future. Sonia, Sonia Dunbar is a registered dental hygienist and also has her master's in health administration. But what sets her apart are some really, really cool things. So I'm gonna take two seconds here. First of all, as a registered dental hygienist, she cares about her patients like everybody else, but she also has 28 years of experience. And we're gonna, we're gonna get some insight into that. She has a passion. And that passion is kind of what's driven her to be the geriatric tooth fairy. With her husband, they're, they're owners of the uh, Mobile Dental Express. They provide comprehensive dental care. And also, she is a U.S. Navy veteran. So thank you for your service. Really appreciate that because of what you do, we get to do what we do. So it's awesome. Now, before we begin, I want to share something here with you uh, about what you all need to go look at. So I'm gonna share a screen here. Here is Sonia. She is also a TED speaker. And when you look at what she's done, I don't know if you all can hear this. By show of hands, how many of you brushed your teeth this morning? Now keep your hands up if you brushed your tongue. That's good, I'm sure your neighbor next to you is happy. There are over 650 bacteria that live in the human mouth, and many of them live on the tongue. There's dead skin hair, there's dead skin cells, food, plaque, and debris, all living on the human tongue. 75% of mouth odors actually come from the human tongue. So let me offer you a tip from the geriatric tooth fairy. <laughs> this is my big, healthy and my blinged out toothbrush. You're so silly. <laughs> oh. So, first of all, Sonia, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm amazing. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so, uh, if you folks, those of you who are watching, if you have an opportunity, please watch the entire video. It is absolutely wonderful. Sonia shares a lot of phenomenal information and you'll kind of get a sense for what she has. What I want to do today with you, Sonia, is understand geriatric tooth fairy, your passion. Why, why, and how did you get here? If you could take, take us kind of through that journey that brought you here today, what was that? Absolutely. And thank you for allowing me to be on your show. Thank you for allowing me to share my passion and purpose and how it collided with my profession as a dental hygienist. And I'm so excited to be here. And, and my journey started with my grandmother who helped raise me and was like my, my everything other than my husband now. But my grandmother is, is, is very important. It was very important in my life. And we had to put her in a nursing home. And, and that's when I seen the deplorable condition going on in long-term care facilities with oral care. And that's what kind of started my journey into um, providing care for seniors in long-term care facilities. But what made me become the geriatric tooth fairy is because with our mobile dental company, we're able to provide the care on site, take it into the nursing homes and help people right there. But it wasn't a broader reach. We only can help the people that we can help. So the geriatric tooth fairy was developed to be the voice for those who voice who has become a whisper. And in life, we have stages. Like when you're a little kid, you're under like nine and eight and seven years old. That's a stage. Your teenage years, your 20s and 30s. But from 40 to 60, that's a stage. You're different at 45 than you was at 25. That's a whole different human. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But once you get past 60 and then some 60 to 90, that's a whole different stage in life. And in long-term care facilities, I see people in diapers. I see people with bibs. I see people needing to be fed. I see people that forget how to walk. So we have to take care of our mouth in every stage. So we just can't be a tooth fairy for the kids. Our seniors need help too. So that's the passion that was put in me 
from the divine one above to put that passion in me to be a, a big mouth to scream it out loud. Our seniors are being neglected in nursing homes. Their oral care needs to be addressed, especially with this pandemic. So I'm the voice for those who voice. He has become a whisper and I'll sing it. And I'll say it as loud as I can in as many places as I can to help save our seniors from dying from poor oral care because all mouths matter. Oh, I love that. I love the message. I love the sentiment. I have older parents and, and I, I, I can resonate that hugely. Also, being a boomer myself, boomer. Uh, <laughs> very soon here, I am going to be transitioned into the, let's call it the geriatric stage. And the context of, you know, effective oral care for everyone, all mouse matter is huge. Now, let me ask you this. Um, at Zyrus and, and with a lot of the other guests that we've had here, your good friend, Melissa Turner, uh, Hi, Melissa. Amanda, <laughs> right on, who, who we got connected, as well as other hygienists out there, you know, Cecilia Spellman, I mean, you name it, Michelle Shea. Oral care is kind of the gateway to systemic care. So Absolutely. from your perspective, how, how do you see that effect or, or how effective do you see that it in, in the geriatric community? Oh, thank you for asking. Think about it like this. I'm going to hit it spot on. The community that was affected most by COVID-19 was our seniors. Now, we have to wear masks over our mouth because of the, the way that we can um, contract the disease. Imagine if, if there's a senior in a nursing home that is not getting their teeth brushed every day. They have plaque and debris on their teeth or under their dentures or on their denture. And they breathe that. I've taken out dentures that have black mold on it. I've taken out dentures that hadn't been removed in months. When we went back into the nursing homes, we we opened the, or some of them are opening back up. We've gone back in. I went, we was going from room to room, taking care of the residents' teeth, fully PPE. Can you, uh, there's one lady we cleaned her teeth. I went to her bathroom to give her another toothbrush because we were given supplies, but I was looking to remove her old brush. She didn't have a brush in her room. So, or in her bathroom, I asked the director of nursing, where was her brush? Where's the brushes? They have not one toothbrush in the nursing home. We have been out of the, now we just went back in, what is this? This is um, November. We just went back two months ago. We hadn't been in since February. So how long had you been out of toothbrushes? So let's get back to the question. Can you imagine we're, the nursing homes were affected the most from this disease? We lost more people in nursing homes than any other demographic. Right. right. So can you imagine a mouth full of plaque and debris, dentures with plaque and debris in, and on them and under them, and people breathing that in? Can you imagine if they contract COVID-19 and you're breathing in bacteria, you're aspirating that in? That that makes it studies have shown that it's harder for people to heal with poor oral care from COVID-19. So this so systemic link diseases, systemic diseases are linked to poor oral care. The mouth and the body needs to be connected for every stage of life. We cannot disconnect the mouth from the body. Most of the bacteria get in our body through our mouth. So it's so important to answer your question, but we have to be stress how important oral care is for our seniors in long-term care facilities and as we age period so i'm their voice wow thank you for that and okay kind of blow me away that <clears throat> i mean no brushes months and it's it's interesting the 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 prospect of or the realization let me put it that way that in 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 our elder care facilities the they may be taking care of them externally, but when it comes to the focus on oral care, it's virtually non-existent. So I, I think it's huge. Are there, or let me ask you this, what is it that people can do from your perspective to ensure that loved ones, family, friends who are in these facilities are not inadvertently, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to benefit of the doubt, being overlooked with regard to their oral care. What, what, what advice would you give folks? Well, I want to be totally fair and I want to put it on the table because I don't want people thinking that nursing home staff are, are not doing their job. Right. But I want to tell you this. Anyone who takes care of an elder, an aging adult, I take my hat off to them. 
because it's a big responsibility to take care of someone, especially if they have dementia, especially if they're fighting you and they're not familiar. It's, 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 it's a humbling and a re yet rewarding career to change someone's diaper and to feed them and, and do all sorts of things. So to any healthcare worker, I salute you. Yes. I salute you because that's something. But I put the stress on the training. Many of the CNAs that work in nursing homes, which which provide this care, the certified nursing assistant, they don't have enough training and they do not have enough time. The, the average CNA has 10 people that they have to get up, fully dressed, comb their hair, brush their teeth, put their shoes on, change their diaper from overnight and get them ready for breakfast by a certain time. And they're making below standard um, minimum wages. Many of them are single mothers or fathers. So. I put the stress and the burden on the training that's needed. The training needs to be done. <clears throat> so to bring the question fully back to what we can do, what, what I did, which November 9th, 9th is now National Geriatric Tooth Fairy Day, which brings awareness to seniors in long-term care facilities. But if you have a, a nursing home in your community, and if you're a dental professional, once this pandemic lifts, ask if you can go in there and train the staff volunteer time to go in there and, and do oral care training for the staff because they have a high turnover rate and you could do it more often. You can even make a short video and ask to send it to the facility so they can use it for this, um, the in-service training. All nursing homes do in-services for the CNAs. If you're a dentist, a dental hygienist, a dental assistant, an office manager, or just someone who cares, do an in-service video for free and send it to your local nursing home. It's going to take all of us to help save our seniors. And they need us because they help build this country. Now their hands are too old and too wrinkled to do this, but our hands are strong enough to fight for them. So I'm speaking for them and sending out an SOS and asking you to help me save our seniors one smile at a time. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, my goodness. You know, as you were, first of all, that is fantastic. And I love the energy. I love the passion that you have for that. What's amazing to me is I, we work with dental schools and I'm familiar with, with a lot of practices that will send their teams out to educate schools. And by schools, I'm talking elementary schools, uh, you know, K through 12, that type of stuff. But I've not heard of, nor have I experienced them going to elder care facilities and and uh, homes for uh, you know assisted living facilities and what a fantastic idea you also and and here's something else I mentioned earlier on uh, you created a mobile platform and um, you are you utilizing the platform to bring the oral care to as opposed to requiring whomever, the, the, the people who needed to come to you, how did that come about? What's, what's kind of the, the logic and the kind of the energy behind the, the mobile content? Thank you for asking. Now think about it like this. Think about your average dental office. Our chairs are bolted to the floor. So you don't have room to be in a wheelchair in the average dental office. And especially if it's an older building and they're not handicap accessible. So and many seniors that are that are in, in, in nursing homes are in jerry chairs or wheelchairs. And I'm going to tell you, they do not like being moved. Once you move them from their wheelchair to the jerry from the from their bed to the jerry chair or wheelchair, it's they, they don't like being moved. So can you imagine having to get a van that's wheelchair accessible to carry an older person to the dental office and then put them in a dental office? And then now this is where we're going to talk business. Who's going to be responsible from trans transferring that patient from the wheelchair to the dental chair? And they don't have to fall, but if you lift them too quickly, their bones are fragile. If that hip get broke, who's going to who's whose insurance is that on? So it's difficult transporting patients to the dental office. So it's better to take the dental office to the patient. To the, to the nursing home. Because in that bed, that bed can let up and down. It's a hospital bed. You can do dental procedures right there. And I'm going to speak to young dentists. Mobile dentistry is a new way of dentistry. I've met so many young dentists when they first come out of school, they already have debt. They don't want to get into a lot of debt. Mobile practices. Um, It's a company called Care Mobile with Dr. Quan Watson. He actually makes mobile vans for dental dentists or hygienists to go around and, and go actually to the nursing homes. 
and you can buy the van or you can just take everything in. But it's a it's a little it's less expensive than coming right out of school and getting into a brick and mortar practice. So if you can um, combine mobile mm -hmm. dentistry and teledentistry together, that is a way that you can provide care on site to people in long term care facilities. And since we're here, drop that plug. March 4th through 6th is the National Mobile Intelligentry Conference, which is going to be amazing in Orlando, Florida. It's called National Mobile Dental Conference. So if you're interested, look that up and come. And mobile dental clinicians from all over the country are going to be there telling you how to start this practice. Holy cow. First of all, love that. Love that. The idea of actually bringing care to as opposed to having them come is only one aspect of it but the insight and and just the fact that you're sharing with us this whole the i mean think about it you're right they don't like being moved around there's a fragility to to, to older folks there's a there's the 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 you know there's a certain process around it and just bringing that up makes me realize holy cow wow 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 by going in it does plus the idea and tell me if i got this correctly of having especially young dentists go out. This gives them an opportunity to get out into the community, an opportunity to actually see what's going on. And we're not just talking this, we're talking hygienists, the, the dental assistants. So it's the entire community. So I love the idea behind that. That is absolutely fantastic. fantastic. Let me let me let's, let me say you this. With our mobile practice, the dentist goes in with an assistant. All the paperwork is done from the from the office manager at home. All the insurances is ran. All the the, the um the um, um sort of the clearances. Um, what do they what do they call that when you have to get something certain pre approved yeah. pre approvals are done. All the prescriptions, everything is done before we even get there. So the dentist goes right in, does the work. There's not a lot of overhead. He only has to have a, a one or two assistants with them, and then. On an other visit, it depends on the state laws you and the hygienist can go in alone and do the cleanings once the dentist has written the prescription. Or just the hygienist can go in and provide preventative dental dentistry. And, and, and it is money in this. People have been doing this because I don't want people to think it's totally underserved. And it, you're not going to make any money. And this is like a volunteer thing. No, you can make money providing this care. You can do extractions on sites. You can do fillings on site. Think about it like this, Rolando. We've been taking mobile dentistry to kids' schools forever. Right. We pull bands up in front of schools, com um, fairs, community centers for our kiddos. And I love our kiddos, but mine are grown. And if my kids are watching this, I'm waiting for grandkids. Work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for money and work on grandkids. But I'm <laughs> infomercial. Infomercial. I'm ready for kids. Grandkids. Okay. So that's the subject at hand. The same way we have all these mobile vans taking care of these beautiful little bitty baby teeth, which we love our kiddos. Let's think about our seniors, because yeah. if we keep breathing, one day we're going to be there. Not <laughs> necessarily a nursing home, but we're going to be a senior. <laughs> and our seniors are going to be older. We, we may not have, we may have dexterity issues. Mm. We may not remember to brush our teeth. See, my grandmother used to say, you know where you start, but you don't know where you're going to end up. Yeah. See, you know where you are today, but you don't know where you're going to be at 75, 80, or 90. So this is why we need to put this out here. This is why I'm screaming. And my husband and I, we're on a mission to change the way we see senior oral health in the community, <clears throat> in the world. Thank you for that. Holy cow. That is so awesome. And also for your kids, uh, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first of all, thank you for that. And the, the idea behind that is huge. What advice would you give people? Now, there is a large community of, of, of parents who still live at home because either they don't have the resources or would rather be there. What, what kind of advice or what, what, what would you tell people who are taking care of seniors in their home with regard to a context around maintaining oral care because you know the they're not being exposed to that and and you know on this platform maybe people will see that and say hey wait a minute what are things that you would tell them that they you know the top three things that they need to be mindful of with regard to oral care for seniors that are living at home and potentially not in in these uh long-term uh facilities thank you for asking i have three the, the first one is i want to say if your loved one gets a cold, a common cold, change the toothbrush often. 
<laughs> because think about it. If someone gets a cold and you keep using the same brush, even if you rinse it off, you don't know how many bacteria are, li are living on that. So if your mother, or if you're keeping them at home and they get a little sneeze or a little cold or something, change that brush. Just go to the grocery store, buy a bunch of cheapy ones, and every morning use a different toothbrush. That way you're not, you're not keep, you don't keep reaffecting yourself. My husband came up with that when he and I got the flu and we kept using the same brush and it lasted for two or three weeks. And once we started throwing away the brushes, things got better. Hold on. Yes, love. <laughs> My husband, he's at the door. Change it daily. Have an older loved one at home that you can't afford. Change that toothbrush daily. The second thing I want to give you is that cavities are not just for kids. Cavities are not just for kids. Hmm. Seniors have a very high um, population of cavities because of the medications we are on. Do we take? If you have if you're taking a high blood pressure, diabetes medicine, de dementia medication, that can cause xerostomia. And, 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 and when your mouth is dry, you don't have anything to help wash the plaque away, and it can cause extra decay, especially around the roots, of the, uh, of the, especially around the gum line. It can cause root decay. So be mindful of allowing your family members, if you're taking care of them at home, to use maybe mouthwashes. I, I'm a Kosas fan. Mouthwash, mouthwash, mouthwashes that that is helpful for dry mouth. Stay away from things that have alcohol in it, you know, because that can dry them out. And be mindful of the medications they're taking. And the third thing I want to say, if you have family members at home that you're taking care of, make sure that they're seeing the dentist. It's imperative that they still have their regular dental visits. They still need to go see the dentist. If you're taking care of them at home, get them to a dentist. And, 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 getting, and by getting them to the dentist, you're making sure that you're doing, they're doing oral cancer screenings and that oral care, that oral mouth, that, that, the oral cavity is being taken care of. We never can take dental visits off the table, whether you're two or 102. If you have a mouth, we still need to look in your mouth and check out that tongue. I love, I love that. Let me reflect. Change the toothbrush. Holy cow, never even thought about that so you don't continue reinfecting. That's not just for geriatric or older folks or seniors. That's for us too. Number two, cavities are not, not just for kids. What an incredible concept. Yes, ensure that they're doing that mouthwashes, that type of flossing, I'm sure. And then number three, <laughs> uh, hello, go see the dentist. Go see your dental professional. Go, go see your hygienist because you, you forget. You're like, no, no, I don't have time. No, you do have time because it's connected. Fantastic. I love the, I love the message around that. Thank you for, yeah, that's so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> so let me ask you this. COVID is not going anywhere. COVID is, is kind of become the, you know what? It's, it's, like like everything, it's 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 going to be with us forever. How do you see the heightened? Uh, uh, I'm going to call it focus and, and awareness on <clears throat> infection control. You know the the whole idea of, <clears throat> of of fomites. You know cleaning surfaces, droplets, aerosols. How do you see that affecting you know seniors in, in a facility? And then also uh, the 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 prospect of of getting you know care because now people are being exposed in a dental practice it dentists and dental professionals have the ability to control and manage the safety in the in that environment but now they're being for you're going they're going into uh areas where the there may not be the same infection control protocols there may not be air filters that are constantly changing the air in there and all that type of stuff. So what what advice, what what insight can you share with people with regard to making sure that not only they're taking care of themselves, but they're providing the best and safest um, experience for the, the patients that they're treating? Are you talking about patients that they may, may be seeing in a, in a long-term care setting? Correct, because because you're you're no longer in your practice where you can control right. everything and everything is clean and you're wiping things down and you're waiting. Right. Now you're going into a long term care facility where you don't know how effective or whether or not they have the same protocols. What what advice would you give people to maintain that and and uh, minimize the potential for them becoming well, inadvertently 
infected. Thank you for asking that again. So <laughs> what I like is I with our team, we stick to universal precautions. Now, what we do have with our suction, we have a HEPA, a HEPA, a HEPA filter, which um, we got from Dental Works. And when we are doing the suction in the resident's mouth, we that that makes sure that the bad air doesn't come out. It's like ninety nine point nine percent effective in in, in in preventing this the extra passage of COVID nineteen. So anytime that we're doing um any sort of treatment, that's the those are the 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 the, the that's the equipment that we're using. We limit our cavatron use because of the environment environment that we are in. And we wipe everything down with the with the CDC recommended um chemicals that we recommend. We also wear our N95 mask. I like the Clara mask, which is so it's clear and people can see me while I'm talking. But we we all rolled up, hair, feet, everything. We 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 wear everything just like in the dental office. But what we cannot control, just like a dental office cannot control, you cannot control what your patients walk in in with. And we we cannot control what our residents have. But we do not treat known COVID people. I do not recommend. You wouldn't treat that in your office. If somebody walked in and they have COVID, you wouldn't treat it. So we don't treat um, known COVID people as well. So we use the same universal precaution, precautions that people use in a dental office. And most of the time we set up in a, a designated space like the beauty salon or a different place. Or sometime if it's complicated, we may move someone to a van and to our actual van if it's some if there's some extractions that they need to do. But the same precautions, the same coverage and, and, and PPE that you wear in your dental office, we do that plus a little extra to go into the nursing homes. And do you have them do certain things? I, I love it. You do the screening. You don't treat people. You make sure that that's safe so that it doesn't. We don't even go in a building that's had active COVID in the last two weeks. Ah, uh, okay. So... There you go. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm you've exposed us to an entire realm of things that you don't necessarily think about in mainstream dentistry. We are thinking about and we look at, you know, what's happening in the practice. We look at people who are mobile and have the ability to go in. And the context around what you're saying is, hey, there is an entire huge population of folks exactly. that that don't have the ability to do that. And we can't forget that. And I love the fact that that <clears throat> you're being a voice for and, and such a champion and advocate for that because, I mean, it only takes one person to change the world. And, and I love I love what you're doing. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Tanya. <clears throat> if you were to if you were to kind of craft a message and to our viewers and the folks who are going to be watching this and and you know people are going to share this with other people and say holy cow you need to listen to Sonia Dunbar and you need to listen to the message she has here what is it that you'd like them to leave this session with what's the what's the overarching message that you'd like to get to them with regard to kind of the 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 passion that you have thank you i would like to say that Humanity reigns. Let's do not forget people just because we age do not mean we fade. So to my dental professionals, let's remember our aging adults. If there was someone in your in your practice who have went away and you don't see them anymore, maybe, let's find out where they are. Maybe they went to a long-term care facility. And let's follow up with that. But the brain and message that I will leave, just have compassion because if we keep living, one day we'll be we'll be aging adults, and it sneaks up on you. So you don't you just you don't just you, you don't just wake up and be ninety nine. It sneaks up on you. You don't, you don't even know you're getting there. You know what I'm saying? I woke up. I'm like I'm fifty one. When did this happen? I was not there twenty one. <clears throat> sexy with it. So I'm okay with it. But the the message I would leave is just basic humanity. Everybody mouth matters, whether you're one or 101. And let's treat our let's treat our aging adults as as with that same respect that we, we want someone to treat us one day. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And so oh, so appreciate the perspective. So appreciate your passion. So appreciate how much you care. If people wanted to reach out to you and ask you questions or learn more about some of the programs that you're running or maybe you're going to be speaking somewhere or or even your mobile program, what would be the best way for people to contact you? This is simple, soniadunbar.org. 
Sonia Dunbar, and it's spelled with the Y, S O N Y A dot org. And I would also, if any, if this, if this triggered something in your heart, and you're thinking, wow, that means something to me. If you're interested in doing mobile dentistry, check out the National Mobile Intelli-Dentistry Conference, March 4th through 6th in Orlando, Florida. Melissa Turner and I are heading the pack and, and helping people become mobile clinicians all around the world. And thank you. <laughs> so the mobile clinic in November, when is it again? It's March 4th through 6th. I'm sorry, March 4th through 6th. And it's going to be a live, so far. We it's going to be a live event. And we only can hold two hundred people, and tickets are selling fast. But at this conference, everything you would want to know about mobile intelligentistry and how to make it work for you, and your or, or not even we're not saying you have to leave your brick and mortar, but even have a a, a a mobile arm outside of your brick and mortar. If you want to think outside the box about dentistry, this is the conference March March fourth through sixth in Orlando, Florida. Awesome. Awesome. And Sonia Dunbar dot or ORG. And thank you so much. First of all, I can't tell you how much I appreciate how much we appreciate you joining us. I love your energy. I love your passion. I can totally I mean, it's it's intoxicating and it's energizing mm -hmm. and and I admire that that you have such a such a such a passion for that, and I, I really really appreciate that. And I love the fact that you, as busy as you are, you've taken the time to sit with us and kind of share your perspectives. In six, three, five months, whatever from now, um, as we get more and more through this, would you be willing to come back to us, kind of update us on how things are going? Maybe talk to us about how the uh, mobile conference has gone on and all that type of stuff. Is that something you'd be open to doing again? Yeah. Absolutely. I enjoy talking to you. I would love to. <laughs> and then maybe you'll have grandkids by then, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> hey, Sonia. Hey, folks, if you like the content of this, please share. If you need or have any questions for Sonia, please contact her. Um, thank you so much for joining us here. Really appreciate this. This has been an absolute wonderful, wonderful discussion. And I'm, I'm so thrilled uh, to have had an opportunity to meet you, get to know you, and uh, really appreciate what you're doing. So thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Have a great and safe rest of your week. I'm sure we'll talk soon.